A few months after their successful invasion of Hilton Head Island in November 1861, the federal troops constructed a series of forts to defend the island from Confederate forces. Southern gunboats from Savannah and ground forces from the mainland posed a threat to the island. Skull Creek could be used by these forces to attack the U.S. Navy's coal station at Seabrook Landing and gain access to the ships anchored in Port Royal Sound. To preclude this, Fort Mitchell and Fort Holbrook were constructed to control the waterway. Fort Mitchell, actually a shore battery, was built by members of the Union Army and former slaves using picks, axes, and shovels. The defensive fortification was constructed with wood, reinforced earthen walls. The cannons were oriented toward the water to prevent Confederate use of Skull Creek, to bar a potential invasion from Pinckney Island, and to protect the coaling station at Seabrook Landing. The construction used was selected since the devastating effectiveness of rifled cannon fire against brick and masonry forts had already been proved. The construction technique at Fort Mitchell provided battery walls that would absorb enemy cannon fire, minimizing damage. More importantly, materials and labor for the earthen works construction were readily available. The fort was manned by troops from the 3rd Rhode Island Heavy Artillery. The records were not complete, but it was believed that there were five or six cannons. From this position, the cannons could fire up and down Skull Creek and across the water onto Pinckney Island to the west. To also deter Confederate shipping movements, posts were driven into the creek bed to form a barrier to ships. The fort was named in honor of Major General Ormsby McKnight Mitchell, a U.S. Military Academy graduate of 1829, he served on active duty for three years. Mitchell was also a noted professor of astronomy in the College of Cincinnati. Asked by President Lincoln to return to the Army in 1861, he served early in the war as a division or commander in the Army of Ohio. On September 22, 1862, Mitchell arrived at his Hilton Head Island headquarters as the commander of the Department of the South. He supervised operations along the coast of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. A short 35 days later, Mitchell was forced to relinquish the position due to yellow fever, and he died on October 30, 1862. The efforts to preserve Fort Mitchell began in 1973 when it was discovered during the preparation of the site for the adjacent Old Fort Pub. The earthworks were covered with a thick blanket of vines and bush, which concealed a cannon. When the ground cover was cleared, an oyster shell walkway was laid, and two cannons were brought and placed at the fort. The property is now owned by the Hilton Head Land Trust and managed by its trustee, the Hilton Head Island Historical Society. The amphibious assault on Hilton Head was the largest by American forces ever recorded until World War II, according to the official records of the Union and Confederate navies in the War of the Rebellion. What remains of Fort Mitchell is a series of 15-foot-tall earthwork structures undergirded by palmetto logs, which form the base for cannons pointed across the creek. Hilton Head became the headquarters of President Abraham Lincoln's Department of the South in 1861, soon after it was taken, according to historian Robert Carson's Department of the South, Hilton Head Island in the Civil War. It was one of the Union's first targets because of its strategic closeness to Port Royal Sound and the vital Savannah Railroad. But General Thomas W. Sherman, not to be confused with William Sherman, rarely took advantage of the opportunity to attack, to attack the close Confederate troops. The living on Hilton Head, called Port Royal by Union soldiers from 1862 to 1872, was easy. The site saw no action, according to historical accounts, and soldiers grew fat from the rations sold to them by former slaves. Sherman had the opportunity to attack Confederates on the mainland, but he chose to pursue other goals, Smith said. Initially, he cared mostly about bread. He built a bakery for the troops, said Smith, adding that many historical accounts describe how good the bread smelled. Soldiers from New Hampshire and Rhode Island, as well as former slaves, made up the garrison defending the fort, spending their free time fishing, gathering oysters, and fighting among themselves, according to Smith. Historical markers at the site note that drunkenness was so prevalent that the Department of the South 
issued an order in 1863 limiting alcohol intake to commissioned officers only, and then just a one gallon per month per officer. Though it was built by General Quincy Gilmore, it was named for General Mitchell, who died of yellow fever shortly after he arrived in 1862.